Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. So I'm still sitting here trying to understand what is it that Democrats are running on. You know, other than sending money to Ukraine, what's the real message? They don't seem to have a message on the border except for the Republicans did it. Nothing on tackling the deficit or inflation. The Democrat messaging campaign is always the same damn thing, and of course, the more desperate they get, the more they devolve into this insanity. The talking points always revolve around one thing and one thing alone. Really, it's just three words. Orange man bad. Vote for us because orange man bad. Vote for us because we're gonna do the opposite of what orange man did. But I don't know about you guys. The way I feel, it's getting kind of old at this point. And I'm not sure it's convincing anyone. The Democrats dive into the hysteria deep end. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. Well, we've all seen the polling data. Joe Biden dips into the 30s in favorability. Donald Trump's the most favorable politician out of all top politicians in Washington. He's winning in the head-to-head. -head. And so obviously, I think Democrats are getting a little bit desperate. And what do Democrats do when they get desperate? Well, they revert back to the crazy tactics of old. Here's Nancy Pelosi pushing absolutely insane, deranged conspiracy theories on Jen Psaki's show on MSNBC. Putin is probably the richest person in the world. Probably the richest person in the world. Forget all these ratings that people have. The richest person in mm -hmm. the world. He's also the most, well, not the most evil, stiff competition for that honor, but nonetheless uh, among the top three or four most evil people in the world. What does he have on Donald Trump that he have to constantly be catering to Putin? Telling Putin, go into these countries, NATO countries. NATO was there to stop Russia, to keep Russia out. They have been successful for nearly 75 years. We will celebrate that uh, security success. And then we have, what's his name? She, I usually have him nameless, saying uh, he doesn't support NATO and, and uh, uh, mm -hmm. invite, encouraging Russia to invade NATO countries. He, he who shall not be named, I know Voldemort well, so there's another guy kind of like him. What do you think, we're all wondering this question, Speaker Pelosi, what do you think Putin has on him? I mean, it sure seems like something, as you've said a few times, given that he refuses to criticize him, that he seems to be a fanboy mm. of him. Are, are you worried well, you at know, all? Uh, okay. during the Mueller... Go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Well, uh, first of all, first of all, we must be sure that he does not step one foot into the White House, not as president or not as anything. He has brought disgrace to the White House, to these presidents. I talked about George Washington. It's also President's Week for uh, Abraham Lincoln. When Abraham Lincoln died, it was embroidered in his coat that night at that theater. One country, one destiny. And he gave his life to unify our country. And now we have someone who had the honor of serving in the White House, didn't consider it an honor, didn't consider his oath of office to protect and defend the Constitution. And on this week, speaking out the way he did about Navalny shows you that he is a person without values. He looks like he's going to be a person without dollars either. But the values are what concern us. Yes, the, the dollars. So I don't know what he has on him, but I think it's probably financial. I think it's probably financial, either something financial he has on him or something on the come. Yeah, oh, let me ask you that. that. You, you, as you just... She seriously, in 2024, this is what, seven years after this whole conspiracy started and has been debunked by basically every major outlet at this point, including left-wing outlets, she implies that Putin is probably blackmailing Donald Trump with, quote, something financial because that's the only thing that can justify his stance. He's pushing Russian propaganda. And you see how much of a fraud she is. Towards the end of that clip, how it's all some sort of act. I mean, Nancy Pelosi, in that interview, almost acted like an improv actor, making it up as she goes, starting with a little quip of Donald Trump might be out of money due to his legal battles in New York City. She then realized that she could build another narrative on top of that and implied that Donald Trump is now going broke 
are having big money issues in New York. Therefore, Vladimir Putin must have something financial over him to bail him out of his legal troubles, implying yet again that Trump is a paid Russian asset working under Vladimir Putin. I mean, completely and utterly insane. Completely out of the realm of reality. I don't know about you guys, but it seems pretty clear to me that Donald Trump is an American patriot, and his stance relating to American involvement in foreign conflict, I think at this point is quite clear. Trump believes in the art of the deal, negotiation tactics, getting people to the table to come to peaceful conclusions and avoid needless bloodshed. Trump wants people to stop dying. Can you say if you want Ukraine or Russia to win this war? I want everybody to stop dying. They're dying. Russians and Ukrainians. I want them to stop dying. He made it clear. We know exactly where he stands, but the Democrats, and even some Republicans like Nikki Haley, uniparty people, big war people, imply that Trump is standing with the dictators. What they're saying is, I mean the underlying philosophy here is, when engaging with bad people, fight to the death. And what they really mean by that is, use other people's citizens to fight to the death. The Trump approach is quite different. There's a baseline acknowledging of reality that there's good and bad people, there's more virtuous and less virtuous nations, there's countries that are free and there's countries that are tyrannical. We cannot control that. It's useless to fight it. What we need to do is navigate it to the best of our capabilities, as tactically as possible, to achieve the best outcomes, not only in terms of trade and economy, but in terms of curbing the loss of human life. That's the Trump stance, and the Democrat response is, that's Russian propaganda, and Donald Trump is a Russian agent attempting to infiltrate the American government. These people are insane. This is crazy. This is the talking point heading into the 2024 election. They're attempting to rebuild the Russia collusion conspiracy that you have to give it to them. That strategy or that tactic did pay dividends back in 2018, but the idea that they could repeat that success at this point, this late in the game, with everything we know, yeah, I don't know, kind of reeks of desperation. I think this is a pathetic, desperate attempt to turn the tides of this latest Trump surge. Donald Trump leads Joe Biden nationally by plus six in the latest Rasmussen presidential poll. Quick, deploy Nancy Pelosi to tell the American people that Donald Trump is a Russian spy. Democrats are panicked. I mean, for Pete's sakes, People try to deny the idea of a Trump surge. Or even, let's be fair, let's not even call it a Trump surge. Let's call it a Biden tank. Yet we're seeing these kinds of numbers in New York out of all places. Biden leading by 12 points over Trump, and that lead is cut to only a measly 10 points in a three-way race, or rather a four-way race, with both independent candidates, RFK Jr. and Cornell West. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton won the state by 23 and a half points back in 2016. This is suggesting that the Democrat lead in New York could hypothetically be cut in half over the course of two election seasons. They're panicking because people are starting to see clearly. People see what's going in New York City. Due to the Democrat-caused border crisis, New Yorkers are dealing with chaotic scenes involving migrants assaulting police officers <laughs> meanwhile the New York justice system is more focused on extorting the Trump organization and Donald Trump personally for over 400 million dollars that doesn't seem right seems a little excessive is probably what some moderates and independents are thinking and of course the typical DNC response quick deploy Nancy Pelosi to tell the American people that Donald Trump is a Russian spy that must be stopped from ever entering the White House. You get the point. Anyways, that's what I got for you. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.